The moon is our planet's sole true natural satellite. Before one can truly appreciate the moon and everything it offers in terms of exploration and discovery, one must first understand the moon and how it came to be the way it is today. The People's Republic of China, or PRC, is counting on its reliable Long March rocket boosters to help it advance in the emerging space race with the United States. It sent rovers to the moon and Mars and constructed a new space station while we were asleep. Just like it occurred after Sputnik, the argument, are we starting to lose the space race, has emerged. There are a lot of space races happening right now. Trade, science, and even conflict can all occur in Earth orbit as more and more countries invest in space projects. The Low Earth Orbit, or LEO, market is incredibly competitive because of its attractiveness and the significant economic advantages it could provide. As a result, more missions are being planned from a more selected, yet expansive group of players, and the variety of solar system objects expected to be explored by a probe is increasing. In this video, we will be talking about a brand new wacky moon. In 2019, while exploring the moon's dark side, China's Chang'e 4 lunar rover came across a gel-like material with an unusual hue. On day 8 of the expedition, this extraordinary discovery was made by the rover U-2-2. The experts in charge of the mission have put further research on hold to use the rover's tools to identify the mysterious substance. In 2019, on July 25th, U-2-2 started its eighth day of operation. On July 28th, Chang'e 4's crew prepared to put U-2-2 to rest for its noon napping to shield it from the sun's radiation and warmth. After reviewing photographs acquired by the rover's primary camera, one of the specialists noticed a crater that appeared to be occupied with a substance distinct in color and luster from the other of the lunar surface. The discovery attracted the attention of the navigation team, so they swiftly reached out to the on-call lunar experts they had on hand. The cooperation led to the decision to halt U-22's westward voyage so that it could investigate the mystery substance. As it slowly neared the crater, U-22 used its cameras to get a closer look at the curiously cultured material and its surroundings to better navigate around them. The rover's visible and near-infrared spectrometer, or VNIS, was employed to determine the substance's nature at both locations. Using the same equipment as VNIS, Chinese researchers proclaimed in May that they had found intriguing clues of lunar mantle material in the von Karman crater. Researchers have made several other surprising discoveries on the moon before U-22. Geologist Harrison Schmidt was ecstatic to find orange earth near the Taurus Littrow landing location on the Apollo 17 expedition in 1972. Aware of this discovery were Apollo captain and moonwalker Gene Cernan. A vast volcanic outburst 3.64 billion years ago is responsible for the moon's orange crust. The Chang'e 4 spacecraft, which had been in operation since early December, completed its first ever arrival on the moon's distant side on January 3rd. U-22 rover made it 890 feet across the moon's surface on lunar day 8. The Chang'e 4 lander and U-22 rover deactivated at the completion of their eight lunar days and on August 7th and started their ninth lunar day. U-22 went into a six-day precautionary sleep at local noon on the ninth lunar day, then resumed its voyage to the west and stopped for the night on the fifth lunar day, approximately 24 hours after regional sunset. According to experts' predictions, rock is its fundamental element. The results of Jio Sheng and colleagues' analysis of data from U-22's panorama and hazard prevention sensors and the rover's VNIS were published in Earth and Planetary Science Letters. To determine the substance's likely structure and volume, they analyzed the VNIS spectra using a method called spectral unmixing. The breccia generated by the contact melting in roughly 20 by 6 inches in size has a deep greenish shine, as reported by the experts. These characteristics are typical of glass, which forms due to contact melts or volcanic activities. Researchers concluded that impact-generating welding was accountable for the bonding, welding, and agglutinating. They speculate that it might be similar to the lunar contact melt breccia carried back from the moon by NASA's Apollo program. Apollo specimens 15466 and 70019 share characteristics with the moon, according to Clive Neal, a NASA astronomer from the University of Notre Dame. Dr. Harrison Jack Schmidt, an astronaut and expert geologist, collected sample 70019, which consists of dark, fractured fragments of mineral bonded together and black shimmering glass. 
however, one must accept the findings carefully. The research does note certain limitations to the study, such as the notion that the VNIS observations were performed in low light conditions. NASA postdoctoral project investigator and Goddard Space Flight Center worker Dan Moriarty explains that the specific challenges of spectral unmixing result from Chang'e 4's exploration of unknown terrain on the moon. We don't have samples from this region that would help inform the model parameters. For this reason, the precise regolith composition results presented in this paper may not be completely accurate, Moriarty said. However, the authors do an excellent job of rigorously documenting their approach and assumptions so the results can be understood in the context of this extremely challenging problem. Moriarty argues that their current knowledge of the element is credible because it is in line with previous conceptions relying on older images. The discovery of features on the moon's far side by recent missions comparable to those observed by the Apollo astronauts has been very motivating, according to Moriarty. The neighborhood is also examined carefully. The authors conclude that the regolith on the moon contains a mixture of components from many sources. The collision that created the FinCEN crater is universally acknowledged as the primary cause, while it is possible that ejection from the nearby Alder crater was also a factor. What exactly is it if it isn't what they're anticipating? It isn't easy to speculate at this point, but data from earlier moon exploration implies that it's most likely a massive rock. Such rocky shards are frequently discovered in the aftermath of craters caused by impacts. This cube may be an artifact of the photograph's low resolution or an authentic part of the scene. Additional images taken from a closer range are required to determine the object's true nature. If it turns out to be something supernatural, we'll have to make some adjustments. Now more than ever, the hunt for alien artifacts is something scientists are taking seriously. These artifacts could be hiding on the moon, Mars, or perhaps an asteroid. This is also thinking behind recently publicized projects like SETA, Search for Extraterrestrial Artifacts. A periodic report on the project's progress shows that the pioneering robots responsible for the first successful lunar landing are finishing their mission. The Chengu-4 lander and U-22 rover, both Chinese, landed in von Karman Crater in January 2019 to commence their scientific and exploratory operations. A project update provided in honor of the Chinese solar calendar Mid-Autumn Festival, also referred to as the Moon Festival, indicates that the solar-powered vessel is in good operating order, despite the lack of details on their status in recent weeks. CCTV reports that after almost three and a half years on the distant side of the moon, the six-wheeled, roughly 309-pound U-22 had traveled nearly 4,265 feet. It has also been seen in action by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. The panoramic sensor of the rover caught the unusual formation, which ended up to be a stone shaped like a rabbit. Using lunar penetrating radar, an infrared photo spectrometer, and a static atom analyzer developed in collaboration with Sweden, U-22 has uncovered several intriguing findings on the moon's dark side. The landing's advanced technologies help strengthen our knowledge of the moon's distant side. It was required for China to install a relay satellite in an eccentric orbit far beyond the moon to permit transmission between both the Chengdu-4 probe and Earth because the distant side of the moon barely encounters Earth. The orbiting spacecraft was given the catchy moniker Che Chao. The next Chinese trip to the moon will indeed be dubbed Chengdu 6, while the probe is trying to bring back data from the distant side of the moon. It will remain in touch with Earth via Che Chao, or perhaps another satellite. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. We'll be back soon with a new video. Until then, stay tuned.